I'm Kansas State coach Bill Snyder, and you're watching Big12Sports.com. Welcome to the Big 12 Report. I'm Wendell Barnhouse, Big12Sports.com correspondent. This week, my co-host, Sean Dory. Thanks, Wendell. No crazy impersonations from me this week and no look-alike bits about you, but we do have a full slate of Big 12 football games. You want to talk about the three you have circled on your calendar? Well, you know, Sean, it's uh, early October. The Texas State Fair is in full swing, and that can only mean one thing. Texas Oklahoma week or if you prefer Oklahoma Texas week and uh, that's one of the three games I want to talk about it's you know pretty much the biggest game at least in the Big 12 and actually probably in the nation this week uh, this is the fifth time since 1999 that Texas and Oklahoma come into this game undefeated the Sooners rank fourth nationally in total offense fifth in passing offense and they're 11th in scoring offense now the Longhorns are 15th nationally in total defense and against a defense like Oklahoma my question is, will Texas be able to sustain long drives and finish those drives with points? On defense, the Longhorns have to keep Oklahoma quarterback Landry Jones from getting comfortable. I think they'll probably blitz from any and all angles, but if they don't get to him, Jones is, I think he's got a pretty good chance to carve up the Texas secondary. Texas A&M travels to Texas Tech, and after letting halftime leads evaporate the last two weeks, the Aggies are in desperate need of a victory. And winning in Lubbock has never been easy for Texas A&M. The Aggies are last in the Big 12 in pass defense and will be facing a Red Raiders offense that appears to be as potent as ever. Uh, behind junior quarterback Seth Dagey, Texas Tech is averaging 345 yards per game through the air and they have 16 passing touchdowns, which is second only to Baylor in the Big 12. The Red Raiders, though, have struggled to stop opponents running games. Now, A&M is third in rushing offense in the Big 12 and they've got two potent running backs in Kristen Michael and Cyrus Gray. Now, Missouri is at Kansas State, and the Tigers are facing their third straight road game against a ranked opponent. The Tigers, who are eighth nationally in rushing offense, have the Big 12's leading rusher in sophomore Henry Josie, who is averaging 133.4 yards per game and 12.4 yards per carry. He'll be facing a vastly improved Kansas State defense that has proven especially tough against the run. After allowing 230 yards per game and nearly six yards per carry last season, the 20th ranked Wildcats this year are allowing 87.5 yards per game and 2.9 per attempt, and that's good for 17th in rushing defense. Now, middle linebacker Arthur Brown really made a difference with the Kansas State defense because of his ability to roam sideline to sideline to make tackles. Now, also on the schedule this week, we've got Kansas at Oklahoma State and Iowa State at Baylor. Now, the Big 12 finished non-conference play with a 27-3 record, and that winning percentage of 900 is the best in Big 12 history. Over the last two months of the season, I think it will become evident that the Big 12 is the best and toughest conference in the country. While the football season is definitely in full swing, we're about to kick up the hoop season. With a preview of what we're going to have in store for Basketball Media Days, here's William Draper. Check out a special edition of the Big 12 Report from Kansas City as we cover men's and women's basketball media days from the Sprint Center. Big12Sports.com correspondent Wendell Barnhouse will host the coverage each day that will feature the interview sessions of each coach plus interviews with special guests. Make sure to log on and watch our coverage on Wednesday, October 19th and Thursday, October 20th, live from Big 12 Basketball Media Days. Thanks, William, for that Big 12 Basketball Media Days preview. And now, Wendell, it's time for your world-famous shout-outs. Well, we're going to start out with volleyball, and if you need any more evidence that the Big 12 is going to be a street fight in that sport, we got it over the last couple of days. Texas, the conference's highest-ranked team, went on the road and lost at number 25 Oklahoma in five sets. Then the Longhorns went to Iowa State and knocked off the 16th-ranked Cyclones in five sets. Oklahoma is 3-0, the only undefeated team in the Big 12, and this Saturday, they traveled to Iowa State. Now things are far from quiet in Stillwater where there's a bunch of teams in the national rankings. The defending national champion men's cross country team has been ranked number one all season. The Cowgirls soccer team is ranked number two, as is the men's golf team. Oklahoma State's football team is number six in this week's Associated Press rankings, and Oklahoma State's women's cross country team is ranked number 22. And finally, here's a shout out to an individual Oklahoma State athlete. 
Senior quarterback Brandon Wheaton turns 28 next Friday and he's in graduate school and pulling down a 3.24 grade point average. Now that's particularly impressive to someone like me whose GPA was closer to Bob Gibson's 1.12 ERA in 1968. Recently Wheaton was named a semifinalist for the William B. Campbell Trophy, it's also known as the Academic Heisman, and is presented each season to the best all-around football student athlete. Pretty impressive stuff right there. Thanks for those shout outs, Wendell. And that's it for this week's report. For Wendell Barnhouse, I'm Sean Dory. Have a great week.